So welcome to this project building session. We have one or two main topics. One is about a uh, horizon call project with uh, targeting with the, the Ukrainian crisis that is going to be presented by uh, by Javier from Zoom Europe and uh, um, as, a, as a leading organization with, with Villabon. The topic is around better understanding citizens' behavior and psychological reaction in the event of a disaster. I think eco villages are, are quite ready for, for this kind of, of, of setups. And then there's two calls for which Ecolis has been outreach to work on. So it's very recent and the deadline are also very, very recent. Um, and finally, it's to anticipate the Erasmus Plus projects um, because the deadline is also going to be soon. Um, so yeah, trying to, to anticipate and, and manage the workload and, and see any, any opportunities. If there's any new topic, any topic I haven't, uh, that's not on the agenda, now is a good time to maybe write it in the chat and I will try to manage it in the, in the agenda and, and, and the time facilitation. So if you have, um, yeah, otherwise, Javier, I give the floor to you and thank you all for joining. Thank you very much, Abdul. Thank you, everybody. I will introduce. Uh, uh, so nice to see you all. Some of them I've seen you already in some Gen Europe meetings, and some of them I just know from the name. I am uh, so I am the new. Like uh, this is my first month as project uh, coordinator for Gen Europe, uh, taking over from Fanny, who is uh, now a happy mother and she was a very happy pregnant coordinator when she passed it on to me. And then uh, I, I have also just started uh, as a, also as a project coordinator and uh, partnership, partnerships uh, coordinator in uh, Gaia Education, which is also part of, of, uh, of uh, which is also a member of Ecolis. So I have these two hats. Uh, otherwise, I'm quite new to the to the network, uh, but I, I try to bring a fresh approach and lots of enthusiasm. So uh, if if you if you let me share my screen, I have prepared a short presentation on on this uh, topic. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Yeah. You. Okay. Can you see my screen? All good. Okay. So, uh, this is the topic. As Abdul said, the complete name is Better Understanding, Understanding of Citizens' Behavioral and Psychological Reactions in the Event of a Disaster or Crisis Situation. It's quite a fitting topic, especially for, for now, even though I know this, this has been written probably for one, one or two years at least. And here you have the, the topic number. So this is, a, this is a topic from the Horizon Europe framework program, which uh, as most of you already know, is like the big uh, research uh, program which is a structure around the specific topics. It doesn't let you as much freedom as Erasmus+, Plus, for example. Uh, the general call is Disaster Resilient Society. So it's a lot of focus on, on security issues. Uh, the type of action is a research and innovation action. That means that probably uh, I, the coordinator and many of the partners is kind of an academic a research uh, institution. And it also means that your results are not expected to be in, in immediately ready for use or close to the market, as they say. Uh, but it's still, there's uh, quite a space for, for practical uh, uh, work. Uh, then the, it has to, and then we need to deliver the complete proposal by the 23rd of November, 2022, which is quite an adequate time frame, The budget is 5 million and there will be two projects to be funded. So these are, these are a bit the, the, the basics which are already pre predefined by the topic. 
uh, then uh, I, I have uh, I have uh, just taken the expected outcomes, which is where they tell you quite clearly what they want from us. In this way, uh, also uh, Horizon Europe is much more prescriptive, prescriptive than uh, Erasmus Plus. Uh, the interesting thing here is that not all these outcomes need to be addressed. So there's some flexibility depending on where we focus. These two first outcomes are very much within the re academic uh, research arena. So qualitative and quantitative analysis on the behavior of, of diverse, uh, let me move the zoom window, society groups accept, uh, affected by a natural and man-made disaster or crisis situation. And then the second one, which is more specific, analysis of human behavior as triggering or, or cascading factor of disasters or crisis situations, which is, uh, also, which is very interesting. If you, like if when, when there's a situation of crisis, there's a situation of stress, if, uh, if, if people or groups uh, become part of the solution or part of the problems. For example, with food scarcity, do you share or do you start to hoard at home? Uh, then uh, the third uh, outcome is the one which is really, I think it's really interesting for, for Gen Europe, which uh, I already brought to the staff and to the council for a kind of initial, initial green light. I have to say that this is still not discussed in depth directly with, with Gen Ukraine, even though in the council there's people who are uh, pretty much involved uh, in supporting Gen Ukraine and the Green Road. Um, Development, development of community-centered uh, approaches and corresponding preparedness plans. So this is like the part where uh, Gen, Gen, Gen Europe and, and Ecolis as well could, could really bring a lot of value. And it, it also could give us the opportunity to develop a specific uh, pilots or support the work that is already been done, which is um, of course, not only Gen Ukraine, but also the, the, the work of other eco villages and Gen with, with refugees and in the, in the case of other, other disasters. And there, of course, another priority is uh, climate, climate change uh, related. Uh, the fourth outcome is specific measures to better address the needs and requirements of most vulnerable groups. Again, this, is, this is, gets more, more specific. Uh, and then the expected outcome number five, it's related to mental, mental health. So probably this would also depend on the academic partners and on the approach, if there's somebody with expertise on, on psychology, on, on trauma, et cetera. And then the sixth outcome, uh, analysis of mechanisms and factors that can lead to false alarms and misdirect the misdirected actions this in a way is a bit kind of can be connected to this number two of human behavior as triggering or cascading factors and this uh, would have also could also link to this uh, all this uh, with for example with uh, social media with uh, hate speech uh, manipulation the ways to counteract it and and so on uh, so these are these are the core outcomes and the project depends very much on how how they are addressed and by which partners uh then uh Villabon, I, I was trying to reach already for partners because the uh, it's is 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 good to find a a coordinator as, as soon as possible to start to focus the project and then uh, Villabon is, is willing, in principle, to coordinate. Tomorrow I will have a meeting again with uh, Norbert and try to, he will, he will bring like more proposals from, from the useful partners and the institution. And I will also bring back from this meeting. Uh, here you see a short, short story of the Bon Science Shop, Villabon. Uh, and then since Villabon dedicates his work to key social challenges, land use, energy transition, sustainable work field, social justice, just to name a few. And especially they work with this concept of uh, living science, uh, science which is uh, there for society, which also involves adequately citizens and other 
other actors, which I think it links, links quite nicely with uh, with this uh, community led community center approaches. And also with uh, methodological approaches with the European Union has been increasingly demanding, like the living labs that you have probably heard about, which is quite a bit flexible, even vague concept, but which can be focused uh, to fit uh, a lot of eco villages and a lot of uh, community initiatives. So some initial ideas from this discussion with, uh, with Norbert and also a short talk with Abdul last week is to focus on community and trust building through food and living spaces sharing practices. Uh, explore the therapeutic and trust building values of growing and sharing food. Uh, for this methodology, uh, there's, there's the like already the building experiences of the science shops and the living labs. Probably, uh, and depending on the academic partners, there would be this need for a behavioral and decision making conceptual model of trust among different actors. Do you trust only the members of your community? Does how do you trust uh, people from outside? Uh, after which point do you trust also authorities? And then Ukraine could become a, an in-depth study case, uh, depending on further discussion. Um, and then, but then, of course, the proposal would need to take uh, and care all the uncertainty involved, how the war will evolve, when will it end, the reconstruction, and so on. So it's quite motivating, but quite a challenge. And finally, just to show you the, if you if you hadn't seen it, the, this green road of eco villages now active in in ukraine you see all all the all the green dots and all the other uh eco, eco, eco villages in in europe which are which are supporting so that was my my presentation do you have any more specific uh, um questions are you are you are you interested how do we go on abdul Question sounds good. I see some mics open. Feel free. Yeah. Uh, I, I saw your mic open, Camille and Nenad, so I thought you two had a question. I have a question. What kind of partners are you looking for? And uh, what is the size of partnership you are wanting to convene? That's pretty much open. But and it also depends on the on the on the roles. Uh, for example, we would be very much happy to have some uh, psychology, sociology uh, research institution, and uh, and then the size of partners, like just roughly, you can say it's five million, so around twelve partners, so to say. The good thing of uh, organizations like Equalist and uh, Gen Europe is that they're a, a bit of an umbrella organization. Uh, so through a single partner, uh, many different actors or smaller organizations and so on can be, can be involved uh, without the administrative and reporting burden of full partnership. I don't know how you negotiate or how you organize that within Equalis, but it depends, uh, I guess, to start with the, the motivation. Yes, Anna and Margarita. Yes, I would like to say that um, at my university we can get both sociological, both uh, sociologic. Uh, we can get expertise both in the fields of sociology. I'm a sociologist, and also in the fields of social psychology. So we could cover the academic part. Of this exercise, I'm currently, as you know, I'm currently the PI of the Euroregion project, which uh, which focuses on uh, on political sociology. But we also have colleagues who focus on social psychology. There's another research center in my university that focuses exactly on that, and we certainly can provide that expertise. That's great. Do, would you do you have also because I, I don't I don't even know if it exists like. I have found some some stuff, some previous research, more focused on business making, on trust theories, oh, and where, models of, of trust. Where exactly? Where did you find I, this research? 
uh, well, Google Scholar, ResearchGate, like uh, research published by whom? Who are the authors, and uh, what is their? I, I would I would have to look for the links. I need to. I was I was just kind of scouting a little bit. What is what is being done on trust? So that's why I'm asking you about uh, if there's some kind of model or theory of trust. How trust is built? To be honest, no. This is definitely something we could we could work on. And I, I just shared my. I just shared my email address on the on the chat box. So I would uh, I would appreciate if you could kindly email me any literature you already found on the subject, and mm -hmm. meanwhile I can make some contacts among my colleagues for this. Great, yeah, lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah, it would be great to see what's already written about the topic and what the gaps in literature are, so that we can work on a model for research. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> I am taking notes about uh, everything that's been said right now. Uh, so, so you know how. Nenad, I saw you tagged us on the community board. We'd like to share it out loud because also it's recorded. So it's good if. Uh, I, I just uh, noticed that uh, this call is actually about direction we are taking as a network in Croatia. We are more, more and more looking into uh, disaster preparedness. We are, we are starting to collaborate with the uh, uh, Croatian Crisis Management Association as a professional body. And uh, well, generally, it's, it looks interesting. However, I'm afraid that uh, Horizon projects are not really uh, up to our capacity. So on the other hand, we do have uh, quite a lot of uh, very good uh, local partners here mm -hmm. that also has, um, for example, academic institution with the with with psychology and sociology departments as well. So. But our focus is climate change. Mm -hmm. Can be also fit into climate disaster, disaster, uh, disaster. Uh, it's rewritten really mm -hmm. disaster or crisis situation. The crisis. This is Ukraine and disaster. Um, yeah. Natural made. Let's say. Yeah, and one of our partners, they just got a uh, European award or, um, well, I, I don't even know how to describe it because uh, they are developing uh, satellite-based tools mm -hmm. uh, for disaster preparedness. And they got awards from a European Space Agency. I didn't even know that there is European Space Agency. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course there is. Can you can you link it uh, the link of that, that that organization so maybe uh, this could be investigated by uh, by the leads and see if, mm -hmm. if it would fit or not because in this project from well, it's good to have also diversity of partners you can have strong institutions and then local partners to really ground it I think it's it can be of support and even if if it's some tasks so not needing a few tasks but not whole package right yeah all right. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah. I, that's great. that's a great harvest already. So I can I can bring it back to Norbert, but he because he will also have research within the network, and then we try to put together some something a bit more structured, and then of course of course it has to be discussed further with Gen Ukraine, with Gen Europe, with Ecolis, like to fit exactly like which which tasks, which 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 ways. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Nenad, for the links. And I um, I will share the notes uh, with, with everyone later on. Okay. All right. Thank you, Javier. Uh, any other need, Javier, or is it, can we move to the next, one of the next topics? All good. Merci. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So feel, free will... to stay. feel free to stay. <laughs> I, I, I need to leave you also in, in part yeah. part to process all this <laughs> and put and prepare for tomorrow. But thank you very much. And I hope we we keep in we keep in uh, we keep in touch. No worries. 
No worries. I took and well, time. many of you uh, uh, we will meet in July, right? In Denmark, the gathering. Yes. Great. Well done. You've advertised one project. You advertised the Gen Europe <laughs> gathering. Well done. Yes. This is very <laughs> well done. <laughs> Bye, Javier. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. We are moving now to another another topic. Um, it's still Horizon Europe. So Ecolis has been outreach to, to, to work on, uh, on, on this one. We have no lead yet. So it's really a topic that we think could really fit um, and, and it needs to be built. So it's transformation of economical systems for climate resilience and sustainability. So already from the title, you can see why we're really interested to, to work on that. Um, it's, it feels like it's literally made uh, for Ecolis movement, be it the permaculture, eco-village or transition network. It's, it's, it's really made for, made for that. How to, like, how to create climate resilient business model, how to enhance the capacity of local businesses, uh, how to empower consumers to make informed choices and play active roles in transition to climate resilience. It, I think we can fit almost all the objectives here by, 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 by the work that, uh, that, 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 uh, that everybody does uh, around. And then if we look into the inter interventions, so objective, this is what the project needs to address. Intervention is kind of actions that, that it needs to, 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 to have, um, uh, to have in that. So yeah, very much into transformation locally and regionally. Special, specifically to prepare for climate for climate change or for current uh, climate impacts. <clears throat> so that's it. So this one is very recent. We got uh, we got outreach last week, but we have no lead uh, no lead organization yet. And yeah, I just shared it with you as a as we really a first step. If this is a topic that you are working on or you would like to work on and would be interested to continue. And create a working group to to investigate that because I, yeah, I think this is very much Ecolis Ecolis kind of projects to to to, to start working. Let's have a round. Yes, Nenad. Uh, who approached you for this? Let me let me see let me see the full name. Meanwhile, any other question? So again, we have a, a possibly a good partner for this. Uh, it's a European uh, organization, but we work with them in Croatia and it's called Economy of Communion. Economy of Communion? Yeah, here is, here is more about them. Um, all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna share who, who approached us, and then I'm I'm gonna look at what, what you share. So it is Focus, the Association for Sustainable Development, uh, that that outreached us, and we are used to work on them on a, on, a, on another project. And, uh, so that's who who reached out to us. And this is something interesting that we'd like to work on. And the the French. Could... Oh. No, I translated it. Uh, no, no, it's not French. It's uh, Ljubljana, Slovenia. Slovenia, okay. I thought that was French. So this is this is who are treated as so focus. And then Nina, what you shared, uh, this is the North American Association for Economy of Communion. Unfortunately, it's American. No, no, actually, uh, it's European. It's based in Italy. I, I share the American page but i can find the european page oh, okay all good all good and i read then in the comments that uh lina is interested welcome wonderful lina good that one of our council members is interested camilla you're interested as a person uh, but right now Luz is not right for to fit any bigger project with a new board okay good to know is it recent recent new board and uh, very recent and it always takes a lot of time to understand the nature of our projects and to go into them and so on 
so it, it's just not feasible right now. All right. Usual pain. I, uh, I I I understand, but already good. If you're interested on, on uh, as a person, then would you be kept into the loop of any anything that continues in that? Because maybe you know different different hats could be. <laughs> yeah, but my loose hat is uh, a little bit difficult right now. Okay. I mean, not difficult, just in a transition. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> Then you know you can have an Ecolise hat in a way. Close is a member of Gen is, is is also a special uh, of a national network of Ecolise, so you could uh, hat. Yes, um, still continuing with the rounds. I don't know, uh, Anna Margarita, what do you think? And that's so going to be your turn, Agata. I'm sorry. So far. So far, I'm just listening. But uh, what do you think regarding what? I'm sorry. Uh, around this, around this project, do you think uh, so? It's a bit different from the origin that you're working on because it's it's quite it's quite different. But maybe regarding your contacts, maybe academic contacts, for instance, or it is indeed different, but it's definitely viable. I can definitely um, I can definitely mobilize expertise for this. And I can offer part of the expertise. Now it's a question of finding a social psychologist among my colleagues who's interested in this topic. But since there are so many people in, interested in social movements at ISCTE, I'm sure that it won't be difficult. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, good to know. Agata. Yes, hello everyone. Um, sorry for uh, having, I mean, for being a bit quiet in this uh, first part. The thing is that I'm. I just joined the um, Spanish hub of transition network, and um, even, even though I'm uh, I'm well, I have like five years five years of experience in um, managing European projects, but only Erasmus Plus. So I don't know Horizon. I mean, I know Horizon obviously, but I haven't worked with uh, this call. So that's why I'm not sure. I, I would have to talk to um, the rest of my team if we have actually the capacity to. Um, to be part of that, and I don't think uh, it's going to be as in like the leader organization. Maybe, maybe as a partner, but again, I have to confirm this. So I'm kind of more interested in the Erasmus, the last part, the Erasmus last part, because that's something that I know more of personally. Okay? But I'm very, I mean, I'm open as a bit as Camila said. I'm interested personally as well. So we will see. That sounds. That sounds all good. All good. So I will I will keep that in the note and then share share a bit more extended. Um, yeah, the, the main struggle is we we don't have a lead uh, partner yet. Um, yeah, so well, we'll see. Capacity is really 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 an issue for for everyone. Just. But as long as I've shared the knowledge right now, um, you could. Uh, yeah, if if you hear of a call, uh, participants uh, in this, yeah, I think it's. It's a hundred percent aligned with the Ecolise mission, and here is the link, Nina. The ugly, ugly link. Yes, Nenad. Uh, yeah, this is what I was uh, looking for. I, I will, I will share with you the slides, and there is the links all, uh, all over, all over. I'm gonna then quickly share the 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 last live call I wanted to talk about, uh, but as I heard that there's an issue of capacity and uh, a lot of feedback will. Well, we can go a bit, a bit, a bit fast on this one. So this oh, one is a live. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Are you sure this is the right link for for the previous one for the economic one? What what happened when you opened it? It opens uh, adaptation to climate change mission call, which is not what I expected to to see. Do you do you see this? Okay, but uh, the title yeah. you shared before was about here? economy. Yeah, yeah, here. Transformation uh -huh. of regional economic system for climate resilience and sustainability. Ah, okay, okay, okay. It is it is part of a wider um, yeah, a wider call. But it is it is this one. Okay, clear. Thank you. All right. Uh, yes, uh, where am I now? 
uh, yeah, the next the next topic, but just to share, I don't think we need to, to spend more time. So this one is 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 life. It's not on uh, Horizon Europe. And this one is around energy plans and strategies to municipalities and region, and especially uh, how to have clean, local, uh, and renewable energy that are developed. And the beautiful thing is that they 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 specifically mention uh, community-led energy uh, initiatives, which is a di directly something that that would be uh, would be interested. It's really about empowering citizen in it, accelerating the the. Oh, it's under, um, so that was that's why it was one that was identified. Um, but I shared with you just just for your knowledge, and you will you will have the slides. Um, yeah, yeah, something something that could be interesting, especially because Ecolis has been working for the past three four years on the Commerce project around citizen uh, led uh, energy community led uh, initiatives around energy. So it would be a, a, a good follow up, a good follow up on that. Um, but I want to give more room for Erasmus Plus projects. <laughs> so that, that's pretty much. Okay, so actually beyond that, around Erasmus Plus, I haven't prepared anything. So this was more of an open space where we can use the remaining 25 minutes um, to have a round um, around, around that. Uh, if you have already initiative and looking for partners or ideas that we can work on. So I propose we make a round, uh, a round for that. So first person can start and pass it on to the next one. And I will be not taker for that. I can start. That uh, I think currently uh, I'm much focused on the work that we're doing in Ukraine. And uh, when I look at also these all these fantastic ideas in understanding the situation better and so on and how people behave in crisis, that's all very good. But right now, I think what we're focused on in our work right there, right there now, is how to make EDEs. I mean, how to equip people with skills and how to build up Ukraine socially, but also physically, practically on the ground. And these kind of things. So that's very much what we focus on in, in the discussions that we have with Gen Ukraine. It's very much about how we can, um, yeah, how we can also get funding for running EDEs and how we can get people to come to Ukraine and be part of that and, and so on. Yeah, the four weeks uh, training courses. Also, because we do see that the people, the past uh, participants from these four weeks courses, they're actually quite now. Uh, right now, quite uh, instrumental in the eco village mobilization right now in Ukraine. And also, I mean, some of the people who've left Ukraine and who are activists in other places in Europe, there are a lot of EDE participants, like people who took that four week journey together, who are now quite instrumental in, in the work with Gen Ukraine. So, running these uh, four week EDE courses, they actually do matter. And uh, that's our focus very much right now, how we can support in Ukraine and uh, especially in a reconstruction phase in running more of these EDEs and uh, doing it together also, having some that are more Ukrainian based for Ukrainians, but also some that are together with other people in Europe who together can, yeah, build up Ukraine, running youth exchanges and all these kind of things, but people can go to Ukraine and do something physically and not just morally support. So that's very much our focus right now. So yeah, that's I think where where Lewis will focus for the yeah for the coming years actually a lot. So I'm happy that the other people and other partners do other things, but this is where we do some work right now. Yeah, that was from Lewis and Denmark. Thank you, Camilla. How do you pass it on? Please, not me. Uh, Anna. Me? Yes. That's Sorry, a... I, I, I don't know what to say at the moment. No worries. So maybe around Erasmus Plus, I, I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, if this is going to focus on Erasmus Plus and cooperation partnerships. 
Uh, okay, so you know that the Euroregion team has, uh, has also applied Sorry, uh, I was looking also at, a, at an email that I, that I just received. I'm I'm on different fronts at the moment, so I'm so I'm sorry if I if I'm acting rude by not being like totally focused. But I, I just returned from a work trip and uh, and uh, I'm dealing with a lot of stuff right now. So um, I know you're aware that my team has applied for an Erasmus Plus grant, which includes uh, Gen Europe, and and which aims which aims actually to promote training in the field of policy making and policy advocacy, and also to and also to carry out a survey. So, would you like to apply for Erasmus Plus to, um, you know, to to work on this question of the of the psychological drivers of uh, of uh, of community level resilience? Is that what you mean? Um, it, it's really an open question about uh, any any ideas that we could uh, we, we could start with, with the colleagues and how we, we could part of it. it. It could be an idea. I had this, for instance, didn't come to mind. I totally forgot about what Gen Europe has done with the with the whole region. So yeah, you know, you know, to be honest with you, I think that um, that an Horizon an Horizon Europe grant and and the Horizon you know and Horizon Europe co uh, call will give us a, a much greater margin, a much greater margin, you know, not only to carry out research and to really understand, you know, not only to carry out participatory action research and for us to understand our movement much more deeply, but I'm sorry, you don't agree? Oh, I do, you I do. do. Agree. I uh, do. But also to carry out training work workshops and perhaps types of training workshops that, that can be even more comprehensive and much more inclusive than those of Erasmus Plus, which are mainly direct, directed at youth or certain social groups. I agree with what Camilla says, and I'm, I'm sorry if something has been escaping me because I, I, I'm, having, I'm multitasking today, but uh, I honestly think that it wouldn't hurt to focus on, on an Horizon Europe grant. And that we can, and that we at Ishkte can be of an even greater service to you, as the as like the academic, as the academic leg of the consortium. Um, Agatha just waved. Does that mean that you agree? That you disagree? Or um, yeah, sorry about that. I should have explained this before. I mean, I'm also a part from the transition network. I'm part of the Extinction Rebellion movement. Right. And we use this. I mean, as far as I know, um, I mean, this means like when when you agree with something that somebody else is saying, you do this as if you were uh, uploading. So it's just a way not to, you know, like stopping you and saying, oh, yeah, and I, I agree with you. That was cool. I just do this and that's it. So yes. sorry about this because it's really strange. Yeah, yes, but I don't know the meaning of this gesture, but I just saw one hand, so that's oh, why. Yeah, sorry. yeah, thanks for the clarification. Yeah, that's it. Camila, do you agree? Do you disagree? I think there is a need for both the academic and the very practical side, and the very much the networking side in this situation. Yeah. And now I'm again focusing on, on what's happening in, in our eastern part of Europe right now. Um, so yeah, I think it, it would be, it's also a time where I think it's needed that we do coordinate and network and, and, and that we are together in this, uh, especially in this uh, situation in this time right now, so that uh, whatever we do can supplement each other and that we know what each other are doing also. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't really know what to expect from this call and what I take away from it, really. But I think that it's uh, it's nice that we we keep um, keep the connection, mm -hmm. all of us. And that Ecolise is like a convener of that. I think that's that's uh, nice. It feels comfortable, kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, and also, I would like to say that for for this type of call, we will need knowledge on international politics, on geopolitics, and also in, on intelligence and counterintelligence. And my research center can provide that. Because this, top, this topic is profoundly political. You know, it's not only about energy transition or community building, it's also about geopolitical strategy. It's also about the, you know, it's also about 
promoting a, a bottom-up understanding of geopolitics. And, um, and for that, we need, we need specialists in this topic. And I am one. And my team is all, also has that expertise. Sounds good. We just have to work on it next. Sure, definitely. definitely. I will. I will go back. I will go back now to give. Yeah, there's still room for the Erasmus Plus projects. Um, so maybe Nenad, uh, any any sharing on the Erasmus Plus project application? Nothing from from your side. We don't have any specific plans. So. Yeah, nothing specific. Our our Erasmus Plus partnership were mostly in adult education so far. Not yet. Okay. I get that. Um, yes, I mean, um, as for uh, transition network Spain, we don't know yet if we prefer a K1 or K2 project. I personally would prefer a K2 because it gives a bit more a variety uh, of, I don't know, possible actions. The topic that we've been talking about or thinking about is um, uh, some, somehow related to eco-anxiety and some and burnout in among activists. Um, I don't know if it, if it fits any of your interests or I don't know if you know of any of possible partners. Um, I guess we would need at least two. Well, if it's a K1, for probably just one. But um, yeah, we could be. And I, we, I think we. I mean, we could here. We could be the applicant organization. Oh, so it's easier, maybe in the sense that we would just just need partners. Um, I I'm afraid I cannot provide any more details because it's not. I mean, it's it's just an idea and uh, we, we just take it from from there i guess so yeah that's it i think you would find a lot of resonance around the burnouts of activists and and change makers uh, you find a lot lot of resonance and uh, not only at least at least you would have six seven people from this call <laughs> you could only the uh, we have a project ongoing project uh, i pasted the link in the chat uh, I don't think it's Erasmus Plus, but it's on burnout, and uh, it has it has creation creation partners and also Slovenian, Polish, etc. partners. So at least could be used as a resource for your partnership, Agata. Thank you, Nenad. Oh, just to explain, this is specifically for uh, third sector burnout, non-profit organizations. Thank you, Nenad. Uh, I see that uh, Lina and Jofi, you're also part of the call. It's okay if you want to see stay as, as observer, but if you'd like to share as well on, uh, on this topic, uh, now is the good time. Um, uh, hello everyone. I'm a bit unwell and have some cough, so I'm. Uh, I was uh, just observing and uh, listening uh, because uh, sometimes you know I need to just turn off my mic and and so on. So uh, regarding uh, Erasmus Plus uh, projects. Uh, uh, we don't have any call uh, in Lithuania, so. Um, I mean, uh, in October, and we have uh, a bit different uh, uh, rules. For example, for a partnership project, uh, uh, we have um, a partnership KA2 in Lithuania, it's for new organizations, basically, uh, which has uh, from zero up to two projects. So we have some limitations here uh, as a national network, but I'm not sure about uh, Ben. Uh, so um, not sure for, for now uh, regarding Erasmus Plus, but uh, I'm interested in um, 
uh, region development, uh, and um, I would like to participate in uh, in um, bigger projects in Horizon. So yeah, maybe from as a participant from Ecolis or yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you: Is there any working group or? Is something like that where I could follow information and uh, about all what was said regarding the Horizon uh, project. So uh, there is there is a working group. It's actually here. Welcome okay. to the working group. Not not only. So um, I have set up a mailing list of everyone that joins this project building session, and I send them. Um, I will send them the note of today and to see who is interested. And then I will make working groups on a specific topic. So today we saw like three proposals. Each of them will have their own meeting. So we will meet one with Javier uh, specifically on that first call. So that, uh, that's it. So the working group, is the, the project group is this thing, this monthly meeting when I share the opportunities and then it goes on its way and, and we work. So you're and in the right place. Is here, is there any maybe uh, a chat in Slack uh, where everyone shares information or where I could follow up, you know, updated? Information? Yes, I will, I will share that with you. Uh, I will share that with you. Thank you. Thanks. You're very welcome. Jofie, otherwise, uh, hello. Yeah, hello. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I joined this call uh, out of curiosity because I'm more experienced on the implementation and reporting of the projects, but not so familiar with the preparation and proposal writing. So it's it's definitely good to hear about this side, but I guess my role will be more relevant as an admin officer at the budgeting. So if we get there, <laughs> uh, I would like to be included in those conversations. So thank you. Thank you, Jofie. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so what I can share on my part is that I want to work on any project development that exists. My main aim is a channel EU funding for community-led initiatives because um, it's used, everybody gets a share on that and I see very little done for community-led initiatives or for actual work. So that's what motivates me. So I want us to apply, uh, if, even if it's rejected, no worries, we can apply for something different and use the feedback. So I, I, I want us to get there and, and, and bring money for actions, good actions that are already being done anyway and that like that's my main motivation. So uh, we'll try to uh, contribute in uh, most of them. Uh, and from Ecolis' point of view, also very much interested to support any organization, any member organization that feels they don't have the right capacity to do that. But Ecolis has it maybe has the right references, has the right weight, has the right financial capacity to for the criteria. So um, yeah, so that's that's my motivation. I think we're getting at the end of this call. Uh, the next steps is I'm gonna share the slides. You will have all the links for each calls and a few notes. If, if you're interested on one call or whatever uh, or on another, let me know, because we're gonna launch the, the, the working groups very, very soon. First of all, with Javier uh, that he presented, it's gonna start now. And for Erasmus+, Plus, if you are launching a call and you're looking for partners, Please consider a colleague if you consider any any one of this member, uh, we could uh, we could be part of that. And finally, if you hear of a call, a project that you think it would be worthwhile and it, it fits our, our mission, let me know. Let me know, and we could work on it. We have, um, I think, the next two months is really into project building uh, before uh, to, to be to be comfortable for the deadlines. Either September or November deadline, we need to start working. Uh, around now. Finally, I would like to give a reminder about a big project uh, that Ecolis is doing in September, the European Days of Sustainable Communities. Uh, it lasts during the whole month of September. The, any, any initiatives that will be made by any co-village, a transition town, a permaculture garden, 
open days, workshop, any any kind of interaction is is very much a fit uh, for that. So it's going to be the whole the whole of September. You can see here the map of last year. Uh, even COVID time, we had tremendous amount of events. I think in total we had a hundred thousand people visiting those events. Um, I mean, it's easy because between UK, France, and Spain, the numbers were were, were it. So, just a reminder. And if you'd like to be to to join and to be partner, there is there is still room uh, to be yeah to, to 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 contribute for that for that initiative either on hosting open events or on doing a bit of the policy work that will tie up for for these events. Voila. And with that, I conclude today. I will cut the recording now.